Hey guys, my name is Bill. This is Yo-Yo Tech. Today we're going to take a look at Samsung's brand new version 3 hub. This was just introduced in mid-August. It is the third iteration of the Samsung hub. Uh, the first one, of course, is when it was a Kickstarter and they were on their own. The second one was just after their acquisition by Samsung. And the third one, well, that's what we're going to take a look at today. So, roll the intro, and here we go. Alright, so let's go ahead and open this up. Now, I always like reading the slogans on the back. This one here says, your smart home needs a brain. So get started with a smart things hub. It connects wirelessly with a wide range of smart devices and makes them work together. I mean, it's actually a pretty good slogan because at its simplest point, that's what this is. It's the brain of all your smart devices. Dun, 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 dun. There's your official unboxing. I'm sorry this isn't super exciting, but really what you've got is a nice square box. You've got a hub in there. I have a welcome to your hub little booklet, which I'm sure has very little info we want in it. A warranty card, it's a little wall work, ethernet cable. That's pretty much it. So, I already got fingerprints all over it. The new SmartThings hub. We have version one. We have version two. And now we have version three. If you look at version 1, on the back we had a simple Ethernet port and we had the power adapter. Version 2, two USB ports, Ethernet adapter, and the power adapter. Version number 3 drops one of those USB ports and we go to an Ethernet port and the power adapter. Now, the interesting thing with this is in version 1 and 2, they both needed to be wired full-time to your network. Version 3 has apparently removed that need and now we can simply have it wireless, which is nice because in a lot of homes, people have their routers down in their basement, which is not necessarily the best place to have to have a wired wireless hub. If you've got a big home, sometimes putting this in a central place, maybe on your main floor, or I mean, even just closer to where a lot of your devices are, is going to make it work better. You don't run into any range issues. Now, along with this launch, SmartThings has also come out with a new set of branded devices. We're going to give these a try. We have a water leak sensor, we have a multi-purpose sensor, a motion sensor that has a little articulating arm on it. They've come out with what seems to be really popular now, which is buttons, so it's the smart things button. They also have the proximity device, which is basically something you can throw on your keychain so that when you come home at night, smart things detects you and can react in certain ways. Now, a lot of people may be asking, well, if I already have a version 2, should I go ahead and buy a version 3? And no, I don't think so. I don't think you need it. Um, but if you don't have one yet and you are looking for a hub, then yeah, for sure. The version 3 hub is fantastic. It does everything SmartThings has been known to do. It's their latest and greatest hardware. They have lowered the specs on a little bit. It does not have as much RAM in it anymore, and they have removed the battery. But to be honest, neither one of those things I think were really needed. And as far as a cost cutting, it has allowed them to lower the price of the version 3, which is nice to see. Um, if you are looking for Wi-Fi at the same time, you might want to check out the Samsung Wi-Fi solution. It has the hub built into it, so obviously you're up in a higher price tag, but if you're looking to buy both as it is, take a look at that because I think it's an interesting option that'll get you the best of both worlds. Now, for those of you who have not been in the Samsung world before, what can you do with this? Well, the Samsung SmartThings Hub is the brain of your home automation system. This is basically where all of your devices within your house can talk to this one little unit, and this little unit talks to the cloud, and with all those things combined, you can put smart processing into your devices. So you can have different devices in your house from different manufacturers. You can have Philips Hue, you can have LifeX, you can have Sonos, you can have pretty much anything that is in that smart category. And they will all talk to the Samsung hub. You can create rules in the cloud that will essentially tell it what to do, what happens. So for example, you can take a smart things uh, multi-sensor, which is a little sensor that opens and closes with the door. It also gives you temperature readings, humidity readings. So a really simple example of that would be to take the SmartThings multi-sensor. 
and you stick this to the front door of your house. And when you come home at night, you're going to open that door. As soon as you open that door, that sensor is going to send a signal through to the SmartThings hub, which is going to send a signal through to the web, where you can tell it to do other things. So you can tell it to turn on your LifeX light bulbs in your front hallway. So the signal will come back from the web, back down to the hub. The hub will then talk to the LifeX light bulbs and turn them on in your front hall. So you can see how simple this is, but you can also understand why you need kind of the brain. Now you may say, hey, wait a second, I've got LifeX bulbs already and they're talking just fine. I can use my phone, turn them on and turn them off. But what the hub adds is the ability to to blend these different manufacturers together and actually create sequences where they talk to each other. So you don't need LifeX to support SmartThings or to support any of the other devices that are out there. All you need LifeX to do is worry about them. They've created an API that says, hey, anyone else who wants to work with us can, and that's what SmartThings is focusing on. They're working to talk to everybody who's out there and make all of these devices work together. Now, actually brings up a really interesting point, something I heard recently at the big Google event that happened last week, and that is Google threw out a statistic, I don't remember exactly what it is, but about the number of homes that actually have smart gadgets in them, that, that actually have smart gadgets in them that people don't even know about. People who have gone out and bought a fridge, and it's got smart technology in it. People who have a light bulbs, LifeX, uh, Philips Hue, things like that, and, and they don't even know that they're smart bulbs. Maybe they purchased a house from someone as a, as a resale, and there's light switches throughout the house that are, that are all smart switches. They don't even know it. And this is a good thing because, hey, it means the smart tech is getting out there. It's also a bad thing because now you have these homes full of smart technology that is unsecured, it's unused, it's unsupported. SmartThings Hub can talk to all of these devices. It can help a homeowner owner actually discover all of these devices. So if you have a bunch of Z-Wave or Zigbee devices sitting around your house, you get yourself a SmartThings Hub, you turn it on, you go in the app, you create an account, and you say, discover all my devices. It's going to start finding these, it's going to start managing them, and the hope with SmartThings is it will be able to do things like firmware updates. It'll actually be able to keep some of these devices up to date um, and, and help you manage all of these smart devices which are starting to come into your home. Now if you watch my videos you're going to say well what about OpenHab? Well OpenHab is still awesome and I think once you step beyond smart things, once you decide there's things I want to do, I've gotten into this, it's a hobby now, I need to get bigger than this, OpenHab is definitely an interesting one to look at and as a side note to that, I've recently been paying attention to a new binding for OpenHab, which talks to SmartThings, something we haven't seen before, but that's the idea that SmartThings and OpenHab can now work together as well to help control things. So, so a little bit confusing there if you're not interested, but just for, I know a lot of people who watch my videos use OpenHab, and if you're interested, I'll, I'll put a link down below for that, but take a look at it. Definitely something to think about. Um, SmartThings manages a lot of things well, and it may be nice to compliment. Let it do certain things that it's doing. Let OpenHab do the rest. So some of the other things that were updated with the version 3 hub is they have the latest and greatest Z-Wave protocol in there, the latest and greatest Zigbee protocol in there. Of course, Wi-Fi is now part of it. You don't need to plug it into an Ethernet jack for it to work. Uh, that is new from version 1 and 2. Version 3 is the only one that's been able to do that. Um, and I think that if you are looking for a hub, you don't have one now, you've got a few smart devices and you're ready to take that step into the water, version 3 is definitely your guy. If you've got version 2 at home already, you're using it, you're happy, you're great, I may hold off a little bit. I mean, for 50 bucks you can jump in any time, but at this point I don't see any major reason to upgrade. So thank you for watching. Um, we're going to have some more information come out with smart things. We're going to do an actual setup and walkthrough of the house. So if you want to learn more about smart things, you want to see that, make sure you subscribe down below. Hit the little bell. That way you're going to get a notification when those videos come out. And guys, if you like this video, if you think it was useful and other people may find it useful, hit the thumbs up or even better, leave me a comment down below. Maybe some things that you have questions about, things that you're interested in, and let's get a discussion started and hopefully we can cover them in the next video. So thank you so much for watching guys, and until then, that's all I got. Fire, fire. Fire, fire.